Hey everybody, welcome back to Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title, also known as your Title King. As I tell you every week, give us a thumbs up below. It helps us to know that A, you're watching the video, and B, that you like what we're showing. Today's topic, we're gonna to talk about some of the things you're gonna to need to, to get prepared for that closing. You could be a real estate agent, you could be a buyer, you could be a seller, but more than likely, Every single one of you watching this video needs to be prepared for a closing at one point or another. So click that red subscribe button and now we're gonna get into today's topic. So how do you get prepared for a closing? What do you need to know before you go to the closing table? Because a lot of you are gonna show up at that closing and sometimes you're just confused. So the first thing is to know whether it's cash or a loan. You're gonna get there and review what's called a closing statement. Hopefully, hopefully you've had an opportunity to review a closing statement prior to closing. This is where you see all of your common customary charges. It's, it's basically a balance sheet. It's like an Excel spreadsheet that has debits and credits to either party to make sure that things are right, make sure that the closing costs are right, the real estate commissions are right. The one I wanna talk about though for the people that are obtaining a loan. Most people get a loan when they're buying real estate, especially if you're a first time home buyer, you may be getting an FHA loan and you need to understand some things to know before you walk into the closing table. The first thing you wanna know is how much money are you borrowing? What is your loan amount? To know if you're buying a $250,000 house, your loan amount may be $230,000. You wanna know this amount so when you get to the closing table, you can make sure it matches. The other thing you wanna make sure you know is going to be the interest rate. We see a lot of times where borrowers, they, they may come to the closing table and, and they just do not know what their interest rate is. They're not sure. So if you know you have a 4% interest rate, a 3.5% interest rate, you wanna make sure you know the interest rate that you're gonna be paying so you can confirm on your promissory note when you sign it at closing that, yes, this is how much money I'm borrowing. Yep, I knew that. Yes, this is the interest rate that I'm going to be paying. Yes, I knew that was the interest rate. My mortgage broker or my bank or mortgage lender told me what my interest rate was going to be. The second thing you wanna know is what is your monthly payment? Are you going to be escrowing for taxes and insurance? Are there homeowners association dues? What is your monthly payment? Now understand for taxes, sometimes we only go off of last year's published taxes. So sometimes you may buy a house and the taxes may go up the next year when the, when the tax bill comes out. Because remember, taxes are paid in arrears, which means the tax bill comes out at the end of the year. So it may adjust a little bit. So make sure when you're buying a house, you're not buying at your maximum that you can afford. You always leave a little bit of room just in case insurance goes up or taxes go up. But the one thing that shouldn't go up is your loan amount, is your interest rate, and is your monthly payment. Those are typically going to be fixed amounts unless you're buying a house with a adjustable rate mortgage. And the last thing when it comes to your loan is you wanna know the term of your loan. Are you getting a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, a 15-year fixed rate mortgage, a 10-year fixed rate mortgage? Maybe you're getting a five-year adjustable rate mortgage. You wanna know the type of loan you're getting. So first is going to be your loan amount, your interest rate, your monthly payment, whether it includes taxes and insurance. Remember, on your note, it's only going to give you principal and interest. And then later in the documents, it's going to talk about how much you have to pay for escrows, which is for taxes and homeowners insurance and maybe flood insurance if your property is in a flood zone. Great, so now you know all the information to get from your lender, let's go to the closing table. Now we get to the closing table. What do you need to bring when you come to closing? Well, the first and most important thing you need to bring is your photo ID. That's typically some type of US government photo ID, a driver's license, a, an identification card issued from the state that you live in. A lot of times it could be also a passport. I always tell borrowers or buyers that it's good to bring two forms of identification because sometimes the lender asks for a secondary form of identification. So bring two, it can't hurt. But always make sure you bring your photo ID. And as you've seen on previous videos, make sure the names match. If the name doesn't match, maybe you got married and you did not get an updated photo ID, you need to address that ahead of time because you, if you come into closing and, and you're Mr. or Mrs. Jones and all of your loan paperwork has a different last name because you've since got married, 
you could have a problem that could prevent the closing from taking place. We'd have to generate new documents or maybe get uh, you to go get a new photo ID. Very, very important. The last step that you wanna know is how much money do I have to bring to closing? That money is going to be typically wired to the title company, usually the day before or the morning of the closing. After you've done your walkthrough or before your walkthrough, you would go to the bank and initiate a wire transfer. Why? A wire transfer is the safest way to transmit money to a title company. What you want to do first though, as we've talked about in our wire fraud videos, is pick up the phone before you uh, wire that money and call the title company and say, I would like to verify the amount I need to wire you and your wiring instructions to make sure it's correct. Because what happens is sometimes the realtors, their emails are getting intercepted and then all of a sudden the buyer gets fake wiring instructions. The buyer now goes to the bank and wires money out to a fake account and sometimes you're not able to get that money back. So you wanna be very, very careful before you ever, ever, ever wire money, pick up the phone, not the number on the wiring instructions or in the email, just Google the title company, get their number off the Google, call them and say, hey, so-and-so, whoever the processor is, Kevin, I'd like to just verify the amount I need to wire for closing and your wiring instructions before I initiate my wire transfer. If you do that one step now, this would prevent all of this wire transfer fraud that's going on in today's real estate industry by picking up the phone and verifying the amount. So I hope you learned something new about how to get prepared for your next closing. These are very important steps that if you know when you walk into your closing, that 40 minute closing would not take an hour and a half because you know what you're gonna be signing, you know the terms of your loan, you know your payment, you know how, mon how much money you need to bring to closing, and it makes it much easier. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe below, give us a thumbs up. I look forward to seeing you on next week's episode of Title Tuesdays. We'll see you at the closing table.